G'day guys, it's Ryan from SWAT Science Collective and today I am reviewing an article titled Acute Resistance Exercise, Performance is Negatively Impacted by Prior Aerobic Endurance Exercise and it's by Radames, Kang, Porfido, Ismaili, Salami, Williams, Cooper, Bush and Fagenbaum. Background, well many athletes due to time commitments and due to the nature of their sports are required to both train strength and endurance concomitantly. Um, and it's a real challenge to maximize the recovery that they need uh, in order to train those fitness components adequately on the same day. So this style of concurrent training is challenging to implement as issues tend to arise with the interference effect. And the interference effect has been shown to decrease um, resistance training adaptations to strength, power and hypertrophy, particularly when resistance training followed aerobic endurance exercise. So what causes the interference effect? Well, there are many factors that may explain the interference effect, <coughs> um, including acute, acute fatigue, impaired neural drive, uh, a fibre type transition, so a transition away um, from type 1 um, into type 2 fibres, which causes fatigue, elevated con concentrations of cortisol, um, attenuated hypertrophy, so a reduction in hypertrophy, reduced satellite cell density, uh, and altered molecular signaling for protein synth synthesis, so um, an interaction between mTOR and AMPK interference. And finally, a potential risk of overtraining. So what's a satellite cell? Well, satellite cells are um, precursors to skeletal muscle cells and they have the potential to provide additional myonuclei to their parent muscle fibre. And mTOR is a kinase that regulates um, cell growth, cell proliferation and protein synthesis and it also has a role in insulin-like growth factor uh, and it competes with AMPK. So AMPK is an enzyme that through hyperphosphorylation can lead to atrophy and um, has been shown to impair concentric force. So all of these factors uh, together may um, partly explain the interference effect. But the severity of the interference effect depends on the volume and intensity of the preceding aerobic activity. Yet surprisingly, it is poorly understood how the type of aerobic exercise influences sub subsequent resistance training performance. So of course the present study they decided to ask how do four different types of aerobic exercise affect acute resistance exercise performance? So the study's on. Participants there were 11 healthy resistance trained men um, that you can see the characteristics about them in the table here but there are some important things to draw your attention to so um, there were reasonable variances in height and mass um, not too much of a concern for the present study but there is a big variance in strength so if we look at exercises um, particularly the squat and the deadlift we can see massive changes here so the 1RM squat ranges from 132 plus or minus 41 so it ranges from 170 to, to 90 kilos and likewise with the deadlift there's some um, pulling around 200 kilos and others around 120 um, so these are big big differences in strength likewise in vo2 down here we can see that they had a vo2 max of 48.7 mils per kilo per minute which judging um, comparing against elite athletes that are often um, 80 or above these participants were not aerobically fit, which may have impacted how much um, fatigue was encountered during aerobic activity. So study design, well, participants um, were uh, tested for VO2 max running performance and maximal strength on five free weight exercises. And all of those um, results served as prescriptive vari variables for the training protocol. All of the participants performed five different uh, training sessions. So the first was a control protocol, which served as a baseline measurement. Then there were four different aerobic endurance protocols performed prior to resistance training. So obviously they weren't all performed on the same day. They were spaced at least 48 hours apart. 
Protocol 1, aerobic protocol 1, um, was moderate intensity continuous running for 45 minutes. Protocol 2 was moderate intensity for 20 minutes. Protocol 3 was high intensity intervals, 15 minutes on, 15 off. And protocol 4 was continuous uphill running for 20 minutes. Uh, during this, blood lactate, heart rate, um, rate of perceived exertion were recorded. Um, and during the resistance training, performance data, um, particularly power and velocity, were recorded for each protocol. The resistance training protocol is shown here. So participants performed high pull, back squat, bench press, deadlift, and push press. And mostly three by 10, with the exception of the high pull um, up here. Interestingly, the load also decreases. So the researchers chose to do that, um, particularly for the push press, simply because um, there is a high technical requirement to that lift. So they reduced the load. Um, yet it's still unusual that they chose to perform this many reps um, with such an exercise. Results and discussion. Well, there's a couple of kind of obvious ones to get out of the way first. RPE was significantly higher in all protocols compared to control. So after they did their aerobic conditioning, they felt um, their rating of perceived exertion was higher during the resistance training. Heart rate was also elevated um, during resistance exercise after all of the aerobic protocols. Protocols one to four, so all of them resulted in fewer repetitions performed compared to the control protocol. And this was especially evident in the squat. And it was um, hypothesized that that was due to the similarity um, in the squat compared to running. So obviously hip and knee extension. And that, that may have led to undue fatigue in that exercise. Um, average power and velocity were significantly reduced for high pull, squat, and bench press after um, P1, 2, and 3. So the first three aerobic protocols. And that's interesting to note. So high pull, squat, and bench press were also the first three exercises performed. So there is some evidence to suggest that participants actually recovered during the resistance exercise um, protocol as the latter exercises were not so much affected. But the reduction in average power and velocity certainly shows neuromuscular uh, fatigue, especially in the first three. Uh, and so the authors concluded that these results indicate acute resistance exercise performance is significantly compromised in healthy men after aerobic endurance exercise of different type, intensity and duration with largest reductions observed after high intensity interval exercise. So what can we do about that? Well, according to research by Murak in 2016, um, he suggested that athletes should separate the exercise bouts by at least six hours, pre preferably 24 hours where possible. Minimize the volume in each workout. And if possible, choose swimming and cycling over running for AE or aerobic exercise if possible, uh, simply because cycling and running don't have ground reaction forces. Further, it's been suggested that resistance exercise is better if performed first. So performing resistance training before um, aerobic exercise, as aerobic exercise doesn't seem to, um, performance doesn't seem to suffer quite as much um, if resistance training is performed first. There are a whole host of references for you to check out. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to uh, hit us up on our uh, messenger on Facebook or follow the link to email us. Thanks.